Okay. You ready to go? Let me see here. Oh, oops. And Okay, welcome everybody to my studio here in Vancouver, Canada. My name is Michael Markowski, and I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about how to draw today. If this is the first time you've ever seen me, welcome. Um, if you're interested in finding out a little bit about my artwork, there's links below to my website and different social media. And if you want to send me a drawing for me to give you feedback on, at the end of every episode, usually about an hour or so in, at the very end, I take a look at drawings that people have sent me via Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and whatever other social media site that I'm on. And uh, so that's an opportunity for you. So whether it's a drawing you're making today or you made last week, um, you could, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something we do in class, although it, it can be a little bit maybe more helpful for other people if it is. Um, but I think that's just a, a a, a, a good option for those of you who want to get some concrete fa concrete feedback from a professional artist such as myself. So um, without further ado, I want to get started on today's class because um, I think t what we're going to learn today is probably s one of the skills I think you'll probably find most helpful. Um, I mean, I think obviously everything we're doing is helpful from my perspective as a teacher, but I think um, you, I think most people from an outsider's point of view will find maybe what we're doing today and maybe like shading to be the most useful thing. So, um, but of course, there's a reason why I'm organizing things in the order that I am. So, um, <laughs> rather than just doing the first those two things and then calling it a day. Um, also, just before I forget, I'm, I'm using a little bit of a different uh, audio setup today, so hopefully the audio sounds way clearer than it has ever happened before. That's because I'm using uh, a uh, wireless um, uh, lavalier microphone. It's kind of actually tucked in my pocket here, so I'd be really interested to hear what your feedback is on that, and... Hopefully there's not too much, like, whenever, I sometimes can be very physical with my hands, and let me know if it's, if you hear, like, the fabric moving constantly and it's driving you nuts, because that would be um, helpful for me to know, and otherwise i got to find another place for it, maybe off of my body hanging from somewhere here. Um, but it should be, it should, we shouldn't have all the kind of noise, uh, the background noise, um, that should be gone. So... Um, okay, so let's get started here. We've got our sketchbook and some pencils. And uh, I've got my little box of pencils here. Let's see. We're, I'm going to use a 2B pencil. And the drawing that I think we're going we're gonna to use as a warm-up here. Let me just cue that up. Oh, lots of comments here. I'll get to those in a moment um, uh, tch, 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 tch. okay just gonna, so what we're gonna do oops let's do this as one image here we're going to do a come on come on computer there we go we're gonna do an illustration a, a um, a profile portrait. Let's get that big enough before I switch over. Whoa, what happened there? Okay. So I'm just going to drag this down here. So we're going to do a, a, a warm up drawing, a, a silhouette. Uh, and we're going to do kind of a, a, a contour line drawing around this. This is an image. This is the original image by an artist named Kara Walker. She's an African-American artist, probably in her late 50s, who lives in the United States. And her, I, she's one of my favorite artists. Um, in fact, maybe if 
let's just take a quick second here just to her is this all gonna fit on here her art is i'm just gonna make this smaller um you know i, I um, her art she does these gigantic installations using silhouettes of figures that she's cut out um, of paper or painting directly onto the walls um, and they're just absolutely gorgeous these they're huge and you know one of the themes running through her artwork is um, you know, the treatment of African Americans in the United States throughout history and I just thought considering all the things going on in the world today just uh, um, not only to introduce one of the preeminent African-American artists in the world today, um, and also just happens to be one of my favorite artists, um, but an artist who deals with some of the, the issues of racism um, that uh, are, uh, I think, important issues that we should all be discussing. So, and I also think, you know, quite frankly, most of the time... In the Western world, when we draw people, we tend to just default to drawing white people. And that's just something as an instructor that I'm um, uh, trying to be mindful of, is that not everybody who's taking my classes looks like me. And so it's important to, um, to document the lives of other people to show different faces, different skin tones, etc. So without further ado, so what I've done is I just um, uh, took out the background to that drawing um, that she did just to kind of simplify it for our purposes here. And then let me get our sketchbook in here. And actually, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So let's open up our sketchbook to a blank page. And I'm going to drag this down here. So if I was, so this is, again, this is our warm up drawing. So with it, when it comes to, now let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh, is that going to be too big? Too big to fit. Just a little bit too big. Um, no, it won't get any bigger. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, with a, the whole idea of a blind, well, there's actually several different types of contours, one of which is called a blind contour drawing. And if I was to do a blind contour drawing, then what I would do is look at the image itself and not at my hand on the page so that I'm technically drawing it blindly, although... I'm using my eyes. Now, that's actually a technique uh, that a strategy that I've used a lot in my art practice, especially, you know, I don't know, a decade ago, I was doing a lot of this kind of artwork. We're not going to kind of go there right now because it's um, a little bit, it's, it's, well, maybe we'll do some, kind of a fun exercise like that at the very end of the class. Um, but we're going to do just a contour line, which is we're, we're contouring outside. We're doing a silhouette, which is why I chose a silhouette for this particular exercise. So we've got our blank page here. We've got a pencil and um, you could start anywhere. I personally, when I'm drawing, I kind of tend to try to work left to right as much as possible so that I, my hand isn't going over the paper or over my line. So I'm going to kind of start at the, the point, you know, where the neck is um, in the back of the head. So what I'm I, one way I kind of look at this is I think of see how kind of slowly I'm going here. I kind of think of like I'm taking a snail for a walk, right? And with this technique, I am trying to develop hand-eye coordination. Now, whether I do a great job or not is irrelevant. What I'm doing is um, I'm trying to keep my eyes as focused on the, the image on the computer screen as possible 
you know, I'm, I'm looking down every once in a while. It's, um, you know, if you imagine like you're, you're uh, typing something in, like you're copying something from a magazine or a book for an essay and you're trying to write down a quote. So, you know, and maybe you're not the, the best of typists. So you're, oops, let me drag this down so we can see. Um, uh, so, you know, every once in a while you look at your, your fingers on the keys just to make sure that you're typing properly or you, you know, you have to use a special um, uh, key, you know, and you, it doesn't come, come naturally to you. Oops, am I doing that twice? Okay. So... You can see I'm going nice and slow because I want to get as much of the detail in my drawing as possible. So this is this is a different kind of technique than we've done in the past, in which we you know would start out with a. A circle and then we would kind of go in and start building detail outward <clears throat> this technique we're kind of just starting from the outside and then working our way in which is going to kind of kind of come in handy as we go forward So often when I'm doing this with students, I see a few people who just race ahead and really try to impress me with their ability to do this quickly. And I think that's kind of missing the entire point. Okay. So now I can, I can look at my drawing and you know, the different philosophies for how to approach this whole exercise, one of which would be to just be, okay, this is good. I'm done with my drawing. Another thing that you could do is looking at this and seeing the results and saying, okay, um, at this point, now I could make some adjustments if I wanted, right? So in bearing that in mind, I'm going to get an eraser should I need it. And I'm just going to kind of look at the image and some of the kind of areas I think could be improved a little bit here. Um, I'm happy with the chin. This lip might be a little bit big. I think that's okay. Um, but this nose, I think, needs to be a little bit r more round, maybe. So I'm just going to kind of add to it. And make the forehead comes up just a little bit more. And then we're going to fudge this in with a little bit of the hair. So, um, let me see. Do I want to fill in this? I'm not going to, well, you know what? I'm going to use, let's just, just for, for fun's sake, I'm going to, I got a Sharpie here. Let's see if this Sharpie even has any juice left. Okay, it does. So I'm just going to go over and around again using this warm-up technique. So this is one way of kind of relatively quickly getting something onto the page. So I, one of the things I try to do when I'm teaching drawing is to teach as many different strategies as possible for getting you into the the ballpark as, as some might say right you um, because if you're looking at that big blank page and like where do I start I think it's handy to use a few different ways to just you know uh, dynamite that white page and then you have something there to work from. Okay. 
that's pretty good. Makes me look much happier. Um, okay. Is it absolutely perfect? No. Do I... Am, let me see. I'm, I can also... You know, one of the things, nice things about using a pen after I've used pencil is I can go over this and it doesn't have to be a Sharpie. I could just do this with a ballpoint pen or... Um, Sometimes the gel pens can smudge a little bit if, if you erase before it's uh, fully dry. There we go. Okay. So, there's a nice quick little warm-up drawing. Now, comes the fun stuff. We're going to do a lot of drawing today um, to help understand this, uh, this technique called the line of action. The line of action is a, a, um, a process that artists use to quickly get down the main, the, the core element of a figure. It's primarily used in figure drawing. Sometimes people use it for drawing um, animals, some objects. Uh, but it's primarily helpful for drawing um, figures. So, uh, I just realized that... Okay, how do I... I have... Let me see. I'm, i got to go find um, this link to the drawing I put in the thumbnail. So, I was looking for images. Uh, where are we? I was looking for like what kind of photos, or if we're going to draw from life, what photos are we going, or if we're going to draw from images on the the web, which images are we going to use? And um, there we go. Okay. Uh, can I find photos that we can use uh, for little to no, without me having to pay a uh, royalty? And there is this really cool website. Oops, come on. Why is that coming out over here? Well, there's a few different websites that... that uh, let's bring... I'm going to sh show this here on the screen. Ha! Ah. Technology, hey? Um, so I'm just... Pu I put up here on the screen... This is a... Uh, a website called Unsplash, and they basically photographers upload photos to this website that anybody can use for free, uh, what for commercial purposes or not. And ideally, you give people credit. You don't have to, but it's just a way, I guess, um, uh, for people, who, photographers, to share their work and get it seen, to kind of maybe build their portfolio. Um, so I thought this was a, a kind of a cool website, so I'm not sponsored by them. I don't even think they're they're kind of more of like a, a um, kind of a wiki model of... Um, anyway, so I'm just going to go here and let's just type in... Um, since we're still doing male figures, let's do male... Dancer. Um, and so what I'm going to look for is... Let's, this one looks kind of cool. So this guy here. So, and I'm just going to like this because afterwards I'm going to put this info in the uh, description so that we can give credit to this artist. Atharva Tulsi. <laughs> I think Atharva Tulsi, I think. Is that how you say the name? Okay, so let's say we wanted to do a drawing of this dancer in our sketchbook. Where would we begin? So most people, if I was to say to do this drawing, they would start maybe drawing the face, and they would spend a lot of time trying to get the face right. Right, and maybe they get the face right. If they get the face right, then they'd start moving on maybe to this arm, and they start doing this hand. And then after like 25 minutes, 
they're all the way down here they've drawn put the numbers on this shirt and now they're working on the belts and this the pants you know and now they're working on this and by after an hour we've got maybe a shoe a hand and a face right that works for some people it all, like i said it could take a long time but then sometimes when you're doing that all of a sudden you you find out like oh i don't have enough room for this shoe and i'm just ran off the bottom of the page or you know um i realized that this arm was too long but i've already spent an hour drawing it so we've learned a few different techniques on how to um overcome this in the past we're going to use learn this line of action technique today in order to draw figures so i'm getting out my colored pencils i, I think there i saw a question peter had asked um, just in the corner of my eye about colored pencils and i think it was sort of what combination of colors do i choose do i use a color wheel or anything um that's a great question um maybe why why do am i choosing these colors i'm i'm mostly choosing like the, the the colors that are do i have a, i know i have like three color wheels around here but i'm still setting up the studio so i'm not going to go root around for it unless i see it um but in terms of the color wheel um what i'm, I'm generally trying to find colors that are as as opposite from one another on the color wheel as possible for these purposes so that it's easier for you to see on your screen at home um so that means using like a red and a green and a blue and you know i could use a yellow but yellow may or may not show up as well on your screen so i'm using the colors i'm using mostly for purely practical purposes so not because i'm a particular fan of these colors um but uh you know there's there are I'll think of it. There's there's a couple great websites that are are great for finding color palettes. And when it occurs to me, as we draw here, probably ten minutes after we're done today, I'll remember what it is. But there's really great websites where you can kind of let's say you find one color, and like what would be a number of different kind of color palettes that would match up with this color. Anyway, so I'm going to use a a red pencil for uh, my line of action for this drawing. So let's get, uh, where did that go? Okay, there. So I'm gonna pull this down here. So what I'm looking for is what is the most like the, the dynamic lines that are kind of hidden inside of this figure, right? So when I'm looking at this drawing, I see this line kind of going right down from one foot to the other, right? Boom, big line. And then, and I may have ran out of space, that's okay, but this line would go from the tip of the hand into the body like that and then I've got another one like this right so and often generally when I'm drawing line of actions I try to avoid straight lines and I want to try to have like arcing lines uh, because arcing lines are going to be the most dynamic lines that I can use to because we want to especially when we're drawing figures we want to look like we want them to look like they're moving, that there's, they're either in the midst of a move, like, think about comic books. Um, and, you know, if you were to draw, like, a guy, like, let's say a superhero fighting somebody, right? You don't want to, you want to draw, like, the, the wind up to the punch, right? So it's like a spring that's really tight, and then how, like, the most... Like exaggerated movement and then the person being punched is like like, like shooting backwards right so you want to try to 
find those moments as opposed to this moment, right? Or this moment, right? These are kind of these in-between moments. Um, and this is the same sort of, this is why line of action is also really important animation because you find like the, the beginning and then the end to that movement. And then a lot of computer software does what is called the in-betweening or tweening, T-W-E-E-N-I-N-G, tween. It does literally draws all the little steps in between. So we want to find the most dynamic moments of a pose possible. Um, and so this, what we've done here on this page, is like is great for our our action lines of of this drawing so far. So. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add rhythm lines on it. So you could, uh, gosh, I, I, I don't really don't know much about music. I was going to try it. This is sort of like your, um, the, I'm going to try to make an analogy up as we go here. Like your, the, the line of action is sort of like the, in, in terms of music, like the bass in the drums, right? Like they're holding down the, the, the main, the core of the song. And then the rhythm lines are the, the, like the vocals and the guitar solo that kind of go around. And, and so when we talk about drawing, we have our ac action, line of action, is the, the core of, of the, the drawing. And then the rhythm lines are like the, the muscle and the things that are on the outside of it. So if I go back to this drawing here, what I'm, and again, I'm always trying to find some arcs. Arcs are way more dynamic than, uh, the, than a straight line, right? So I've got this line, here's this guy's knee and then it kind of bends out a little bit, right? And I've got this foot, and then I've got another kind of bend here. And I'm exaggerating things a little bit, or, or and maybe a lot, but it's, it's actually very useful to exaggerate these lines. You can always tone it down afterwards, um, but it's you really want to start with um, uh, lines that are kind of got some exaggeration to them. All right, so so obviously I've, I I miscalculated my my space here. So I'm just going to, let's say, here's this core. All right, so these lines that are kind of framing the outside. And you may see some of these lines differently than I do. And it doesn't matter if you get the arcs all in the right place. Um, but uh, that's pretty good for our first drawing. And look, like, there, these lines aren't, you know, maybe this body would need to be turned, and this arm's maybe not quite as long as it needs to be. But this is, we're learning a warm-up technique, right? So let's, uh, let's go to a, a different image here. And let's find, watch this around. I'll leave that there just in case... Um, I'm going too fast for people here. So I'm going to look for another image of these two dancers. Okay. So um, I'm just going to draw the male figure, even though the female... Well, maybe I'll, I'll do both just for, for fun. So again, I'm looking for... The, the main kind of, and ideally, the more of the body I can do in one movement, the better. 
So let's say I've got this movement down here from the hand above the head swirling in down through the knee here. All right, and then I've got this leg coming up here and then this arm, right? So let's now build, we've got our line of our action, right? And you can see maybe I've exaggerated things a little bit here. So this, even though his body is is kind of, um, right, in, in the, the original pose, how do I, <laughs> I don't know if I can figure out, everything's kind of backwards in all these different monitors, but you can see the, you know, his, his body is kind of fairly, like the torso is, is fairly upright versus the way that I drew my line of action as it comes through, his body is kind of leaning back even more. Now, I can correct that if I want to, but I find this really helpful for just creating an even more dynamic picture. So let's, uh, let's go into this drawing here. Where do I want to start? I'm going to start with this leg. So I got this thigh, and then the calf, and then this foot, and then this leg. I could go the other way. Um, and then... It's got... And you see, I'm going to kind of go over here. And... Oops, let's see. gonna draw this head oh look at that gigantic head holy smokes this guy's got a big head um. <laughs> so it's a little bit off again this is still working on my warm-ups here but I've got the general kind of pose in here these the rhythm lines aren't necessarily exactly where the body goes Right? Like this torso needs some kind of work and the head needs to move around. It's just about trying to describe the basic movement. What these... Um, I'm just going to keep this up here while I talk. Um, but what this is often used for is in a, a particular kind of drawing called gesture drawing. And we're going to learn more. We're going to take this lesson and we're going to do some gesture drawing in a few weeks like this. And gesture drawing... We are literally drawing, you know, a drawing every 30 seconds, uh, one minute tops. Like often when I'm working with my uh, university students, we're doing like 15 second long drawings, right? So, and we would have a model, the model poses, and everyone's got 15 seconds. And so it's like, you have to be fast. You have, you're finding that line of action, drawing your rhythm lines, getting everything in, boom, the model moves again. Right, boom. So it goes fast, right? So we want right now I'm I'm demonstrating the whole process. So we're going kind of slow and I don't and I know this is mostly, you know, totally unfamiliar to, to people watching right now. So um we're once we learn these basics here. Let's uh look at this guy here. Okay. So again um, I'm going to start up here in this corner. So the line of action, I see this head come down into feet like this. All right, so this kind of being the knee and the head. If I want, I could put the head right in there. All right, and we got another leg these hands like this okay so 
Now let's put some rhythm lines on around it. Um, okay. Building all of this up here. <laughs> it is a little bit trickier to do this in when a figure is kind of compressed like this. Um, so we're just kind of getting. So we got a kind of far bottom of an arm. Um, that's why I'm trying to find poses where we see the whole body um, displayed, like so that we see m like the kind of like the drawings we did, you know, last uh, on Tuesday. So ideally, it's easier to do this when we see kind of the full figure from the front. You know, uh, even like this figure, you know, we it's you know, we see most of the the arms and legs when. When arms start getting hidden in behind here, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, what will be another one? I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm also looking for full figures. So what's another one we can do here? Look at all these amazing photographs that you could use for a project. Um, you technically could put these in an ad campaign if you wanted. Um... It looks like full moon, male, um, uh, oh, look at these, <laughs> these dudes, big muscle bound figures here, um, okay, this, this one could work, I like these, okay, Shane Rounce is the artist who did this, okay, so, again, let's, I'm gonna look for this line of action, and there can, there can be as multi as you see already multiple lines of action. But let's say we get this big one up here, these arms wide out. You know, this one's great for this purpose. Look at this. All right, and then we can do that. Okay, so let's build around this shape here. Um, Or so. So it, it's not s so important, you know. You could do any. You could kind of almost randomly apply um, curves to this, and it would work. So if you're kind of like, why am I going this way instead of this way? Well, I'm. I guess I know a little bit about anatomy, so I'm kind of using those, you know, if we think about, you know, these same kind of basic shapes inside the, the, the muscles, right? That helps. Um, But um, yeah, the, the the whole like these having really good arcs, I find, is like often the the most really helpful kind of um, uh, part of all of this. <laughs> and at this point, we even have to really worry about hands, although you know they have their own kinds of of arcs as well. We may even come back to this one later on, um, just in terms of this pose. So, 
How about we'll do we'll do two two more. The more of this we do, the easier it kind of gets, um, just to understand how this whole thing works. Let's see. How about we'll do this guy here? Okay, looking for the line of action. Um, there could be a few of them in here. This guy's kind of got a, a, a floating kind of quality. So it's not as dynamic. Right. But, um, okay, so I'm going to build... On top of here, and I'm also looking through the clothes. Like you see, he's got this jacket that kind of billows out. Um, so I'm just kind of drawing right through that. You know, even here, like so, I originally did that line kind of going outward, and then I just kind of changed it just to make it a little bit more dynamic. Same thing here. It's also, I, I think, kind of nice to alternate these, you know. So if this one's going this way, this one kind of comes up. So you almost have, like, S shapes all the time. Um... Let's see what's another one we can do. This guy will be jumping. Oops, he doesn't seem to want to get any bigger, does he? Make no. Okay, it's kind of small, but that's okay. We, we just need the the basic kind of uh, motion here. So let's we got. This head, foot. We got this foot here. We got one arm here, and let's say we're, we're even going to continue this to another arm and behind. Even though we don't see it, we're going to put it there. So, um, let's. I'm going to start with this foot arc. So once, what I love doing is once you start doing this, you start, you can, instead of just doing little tiny arcs, you can start doing these kind of, well, kind of arabesques as they're, they're known, like you kind of do longer, more continuous lines. We don't have this arm here yet, so I'm going to say that it's not in the original, so I'm going to save it for a few minutes, or until I get this one in place. Okay. So you see how kind of there's like so much movement in these drawings, right? Like they, like they, this they feel like they're bouncing and they're moving and they're are active. And gen, you know, it's even when you're drawing someone at rest or they're standing still. And we're gonna draw Auguste Rodin's The Thinker at the end. And even when we're doing that drawing. Um, we want it to look like it's a person not just sitting, but they're like sitting, you know, like they're, 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 they're really like, you know, with the thinker, it's not just like a guy who's kind of just this, he's like really digging in like his old, he's, he's, he's like really, 
how do you, I don't know how to describe it, but just like, it's very physical. Like it's, and you can, and you feel that just even the way that Rodin sculpted it. It's like kind of big blobs of clay. And, you know, there's like a lot of energy in there, right? So we want to capture the energy, even of someone sitting, because that idea of the thinker is like the potential energy of someone who's going to like, once they figure it out, they're boom, they're going to explode, right? So hopefully I'm this microphone right here, and I'm flopping around doing all this movement here. <clears throat> Maybe not the best day for me to test it out. So again, let me know how that, how it's holding up. Um, okay, so these, I mean, this is a fairly quick, and you can see even just the difference between, um, I'm just looking at my own drawings here. Uh, like the difference between these kind of drawings, kind of awkward drawings, and then as I get, I start going, getting into the rhythm, they get better and better and better, right? Which is the way it should happen, right? And, you know, it's just not saying that I could do another drawing a minute from now that isn't as good as even my first one, but just like any other activity, the more and more I do, I'm going to start kind of falling into that kind of uh, the, the the rhythm. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's hear this. Let's see if I need to record that again. Okay. Cool. So let's move on to another. We're gonna. I think we're gonna begin our final drawing, which is the thinker. Um, so. I'm going to pull this up on the screen so you can see here. Um, maybe we'll just kind of quickly, uh, quick refresher as to what the thinker is. Um, Auguste Rodin, when he was like, I think he lived like, what, 1860s, 1880 or something to, let's say, 1920. Or I guess I could just click on this. 1840 to 1917. Uh -huh, okay. So here he is with his very, very French beret and beard. <laughs> um, and this is obviously one of the most iconic images in all of art. Um, the thinker is one of, um, he made this for this, the, this sculpture called the Gates of Hell, which was like a, a doorway. And this was kind of on the very top of the door. And uh, he, he sculpted a few versions of this guy thinking. Um, uh, and I think he immediately realized, like, oh, this is more than just a little tiny, you know, gargoyle-like figure on a doorway. Like, this is potentially for a really interesting artwork. Um, and by the way, there's, there's probably, uh, there are, oh, there's 28 full-sized versions of this. Because one of the things Rodin did after he died is he gifted his entire estate to the French government and gave them the the license to reproduce his artwork. He because they're all they're originally clay, then they were made into bronzes, and so there there's a well. I could I digress. There's I could tell you stories till the cows come home about this. <laughs> Let's go to. Uh, um, I'm going to go to tools. Let's go to sized because I want to look for the largest versions of these images. Now, which one should we draw here? Uh, we could do, I think we're, we're just going to see if we can do one of them. So, I'm trying to think of. I want the full body. I kind of like this one. Come on. It's time to take a quick sip of tea while it loads. Um, you know what? This one might be better because it's right from the side. So let's see if. Come on. So I'm going to pull this one up and make it nice and big for us. So I could have spent more time finding another one, but I think this works well because it's this is kind of the, <clears throat> the, 
the most iconic kind of version of this pose, I think. Um, okay. So, we've got our sketchbook. And let's get a... a I think what we're going to do is we're going to do just a... a we're going to do a, a warm-up drawing, a line-of-action version, and then we're going to repeat it again and try to get a more finished version of this drawing, okay? So to begin with, I'm going to take my red, and I'm going to do a large picture on my sketchbook here. Where's my sketchbook? Sketchbook, where did you go? Hmm, that's odd. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we're just going to create a new one here. Um, okay. So the f what I want to do with this drawing is I want to find that line of action again. So even just like before I get started, maybe just kind of looking at this, right? If I look at the head... And I kind of come down around the back and then the legs, right? So I'm trying to find this kind of fluid movement, like a river or something that's carving its way through the landscape. Okay, so let's try to draw that. So I'm going to start up by the head. And I'm not going f like, um, this is, well, let me see. We'll just kind of do this. Okay, so even, so, and again, I'm exaggerating this leg, right? This leg is actually kind of more straight, but I'm just trying to exaggerate this. And this is kind of, the back of the head kind of comes up a little bit, right? Um, and then we have this arm. Okay. So I think that is pretty good for my initial kind of lines here. Now let's build upon it, right? So I'm going to use, I like this one arc around for the back. Very hunched in, he's like, we feel the pressure of this elbow moving into the knee, right? And then we've got the head. Just gonna kind of loop this in. We got this shoulder comes in, and then the forearm, and this thumb and hand. And it's like pretty. It's you know this is an awkward position that he's in, right? Isn't even though he's thinking, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to hold this pose for long. Okay. So this is this kind of rock that he's sitting on. even just imagine that part of there. Um, let's, I'm going to draw the other leg in that hand. Um, let me see. So we have this other hand Other, the thumb, and then we have this knee in here. <laughs> I 
know if you can hear our my wife and daughter upstairs having some fun. <laughs> um, okay. And even though I can't, the way that I've drawn this, I think I need that other, even though it's not, it doesn't appear there, just the way that I've drawn this. Um, yeah, I'll just, well, th so this, this would be my illustration for the action lines and rhythm lines for the thinker, right? Just to kind of get us into the zone. I'm going to leave that up here just for a second to have a sip of tea. One of the comments I got from last week is I might have, things felt a little bit rushed, so I, I don't want to go too fast um, for people. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that up for a second, and then we're going to do this drawing, uh, and I'm going to set I'll get my, my timer out here, because I'll set a little bit of a timer. So whether, you don't have to worry about doing it exactly like my drawing. You may have seen some of these arcs going in different directions for the rhythm lines. Um, that's totally fine, right? It's, it's, it, uh, everyone has their own way of expressing themselves. And this is just, again, getting to help get us into the ballpark. So I'm going to flip to another page and let's... I'm going to try doing this again, and I'm going to use the same colors, and I'm going to build up over top of my drum. So I'm going to, let's, I'm going to sharpen my pencils for a second, we'll just leave that there. I guess another thing to go back to Peter's question about color and why I use these colors, I not only I, I like using the opposite colors, not only just for clarity purpose for here, but often it's really nice to see you know if I'm if I have a figure and the shadow like the, in this case let's say this bronze kind of dark blue and and brown kind of image using let's say some red and putting that into the shadows is going to create a little bit more of a dynamic image than just i try not to use the the black just for shadows when i think okay so let's see how much we can get done here in 10 minutes okay so i want to keep this same kind of um movement that I had from before, right? So I'm going to start up here with this head. Right, even made, it looks like, almost more springy version. He's leaning even further into his drawing than he did before. And that's fine. Um, and I'll just, I'll, let's see, I'm going to draw this slightly differently than I did before. Just to show you that there's, maybe I'll, I'll do this other leg here in the hand. Okay, so I've got my basic lines down on here. Now let's let's uh, I'm gonna basically redrawing, doing exactly what I just did, but we're, we'll do it again. So let's I'm gonna start here. So this kind of nice, kind of outer shape in the back. And then this head. Um, let me see. So if we imagine this is the ground here. We've got this knee. And then this leg. And these aren't, again, I'm, I'm not going for the final version of his, his body here. Like, I might do a little bit of 
um, changes in here. I'm just trying to get the feeling for the form. All right, like I've I've just incorporated the the shoulder and the bicep all into one one line, which won't be like that um, completely from. Drawing these kind of well, I'm, I'm going to come back to the well. I was going to say I was going to come back to the thumb, but let's just get this kind of wavy quality here. Um, now let's do this hand again. Okay. Oh, I've got the side here. Okay, so now I've got the basics of my drawing in here. Let's just see what, what the difference is between these two. Uh, pretty similar. I didn't draw this in advance, by the way. I, I, I didn't. I'm, this is not like me cheating and trying to like show you how masterful I am or anything. This is me doing this for the first time. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to think of, did I, it looks like I approached it fairly similar both times. Um, okay. So now let's, let's start getting into some detail here. And to do that, I'm just going to choose, let's say, a different color. What would be something different that's going to stand out? I think it's like some kind of a green. I wonder, would that green look different enough. Maybe that one. Let's try this. Um, and this green will maybe look nice as like an Tina. Okay. So now, now that this is up on the, on here, I'm just going to start now. I, I look at my proportions and I feel like things are, are relatively good, right? Like I use my, um, when I'm when I'm drawing, I use that cliche drawing technique of, of kind of squinting your eye, right? Like you're pretending you're sleeping. I use that and I look at my drawing. And that kind of, again, helps remove any details. Not a lot of detail here to begin with. But just like, do I feel like the legs are too long? Or the bicep too long? Like, does everything feel good? Like, does it, or does it seem a little bit awkward? And if it is a little bit awkward, where is it awkward? All right, and I can if I um, it helps when the when a drawing is from the side like this or from the front because then I can kind of do something like this, right? I can go back to my original like to this side here. I can go okay, like look um, from the wrist to the elbow is essentially the same, or let's be easier to see on this side, right? From the wrist to the elbow, you know, is like one head high, right? So this should be basically about the, the uh, head high, right? From the the knee to the, the heel should be basically two heads high, right? So I got here, here. It looks like I'm pretty good. Um, Let's see, for the bice, so that the, from the elbow to the shoulder should be one and a half heads high. So this bicep is maybe a little bit sh short, right? So that the shoulder is going to have to come up a little bit higher. The, the, this is just to help you evaluate your drawing. I'm not saying, because um, I, I don't want you to... to Sometimes what happens is is then people, you know, they break out the ruler and they're like, okay, well, if that's the the length of my head, it's going it has to be exactly two 
and three quarter inches, and then this. Okay, no, I got it right. Like that, I think you can do that. And if you're a real like left brain um, kind of uh, a thinker, then taking a very analytical approach to drawing might work for you. But I think for other people, it might really slow them down. Okay, so look at this. I got um, two and a half minutes on here to try to get a little bit more done on my drawing. Um, so let's uh, let's start kind of putting in some of these the the muscles here, right? So I got this shoulder. I need to do this bicep and. One of the reasons I also really like this Rodin um, image, or the the sculpture in general too, is just like how, um, like it, it's it's not it's in terms of detail. There's not a lot of like super precise detail in here. It's it's very kind of. Uh, Heavy, like the way that it's been sculpted is these big kind of clumps of, of clay. And I love that about this. I'm just adding these little... How many fingers? We, we need one more. <laughs> I can't even see those in there, but... Uh, okay. Let's see. He's got... It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but he's got this kind of, his mouth is sort of just pushed right into um, his hand there, right? <laughs> ah, look at this face. I'm, I love it. It's... it's what I my favorite thing about drawing is when I do something that surprises me and I'm like, oh, I don't know, this is weird, it's funny. Um, like I, because that's I I like when I'm drawing and I'm surprised and and the results turn out a little bit differently than I want wanted them originally. And then it becomes like, can I accept this new thing that I've created? Um, hmm. Okay. So I can see here a kind of a problem. So this shoulder, something, you know, should have kind of come up a little bit because look how long that neck is now, or the jaw. So, okay, that's 10 minutes to get to this place. That's pretty good. Um, let's just keep on drawing. I'll just sit another 10 minutes and then we'll, we'll be done for the day. And if you have any drawings you, you want feedback on, you want to s upload those now. I don't think we had one last week, so... So largely, I'm keeping a lot of the where my arcs are for my rhythm lines. Um, oh, I'm going to have to change a battery on the camera here in a moment. I was doing some tests last night and with this new microphone. So, battery. It's, it wasn't quite is fully charged. I don't know if you can hear my stomach is like getting kind of hungry. So we've got all the kind of the basics in here. I feel, I feel pretty happy with 
is where we are. Let me see. I'm going to start. I'm going to do some shading in here and see if we can um, finish this off here. Where, now I'm just drawing the, where these feet are. Changing the perspective a little bit. Okay. Um, let's. I'm going to put it just a few of these. I got yeah, some of the muscles here in the torso. muscles here in the arms, uh, a little bit of muscle here in the shoulder, what else, a little highlight in the eye, got this furrowed brow, <laughs> kind of squished his face in and maybe elongated it a little bit. Do I want to fix that? Uh, I don't know. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So, I'll just keep it. Um, got this knee. Knees are always interesting because they got quite odd little things. So I'm just going around here adding kind of detail, like these little marks where I just see kind of darker areas. This is going to help me when I shade here. I've got six minutes left on my clock. Um, do I want to start doing all the toes? No, I'm gonna, I don't have time for that. Okay, so that's... Now I'm going to find a, is that a brown? Okay. So now I'm going to come in here. I'm mostly going to color this whole thing kind of a light brown. So this just gives some foundation to my drawing, a little bit of color. I'll add a little bit of this to the sculpture down here. I think I need a really dark green now. Big box of pencil crayons. Hundreds of colors here, but I don't have that handy, so I'm just digging around, finding what I can here. There's a nice little racing green. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to get into some of the darker areas. This back here is kind of darker, leaving a little bit of highlight there for some of the reflected light that comes. In from behind.
Okay, I've got three minutes left on my clock. I really like this uh, kind of like face here, kind of how chiseled, how dark this eye area is. That's where you can feel the sense of concentration. All right, so it really needs to get darker in there. Hmm. You know, you know, one of the things I I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I often talk about it in my classes in person is that every drawing is like a roller coaster ride. And there are times when you're on your on that roller coaster where everything feels like it's going great. You're really, really happy with the where everything's going. And then all and it's just you're going straight up and look at the beautiful views. And then all of a sudden <laughs> the roller coaster drives off the goes over the the um, cliff or the, the high edge and then you're falling down and your your stomach is up in your your throat and it's like oh you're thinking you're gonna throw up drawing is that same sort of thing where sometimes everything's going really really well and then and then it gets really really bad all right so it's just a matter of sticking with it and and knowing that eventually you're going, the roller coaster is going to to bottom out, and it's going to come back, and you're going to climb back up the hill. And so, you know, even when I'm doing my, so, and you should expect that to happen. It's not, it doesn't just, it's not just you who's, you know, runs into problems while you're drawing. Every single artist runs into difficulties while they're working on their artwork. And if you understand that, then when you're working on your drawing and when things aren't going your way, it's not the end of the world, right? You're just like, oh, okay, I was, I was waiting for this to happen. I knew eventually we would have a little bit of, of issue here. And so here we are. Good, good, good. I was expecting you. Okay. I got 10 seconds left on my clock here. Okay, how much more do I want to put in here before calling it? Um, I think I am just going to get a little bit darker. This is what I always tell everybody in my classes to do. Is, is don't be afraid to get dark. So um, I'm just going to, to follow that. following my own advice that I give to people. Okay, I think I'm, uh, I, could, I could be, I could work on this for quite a while and I enjoy and <laughs> this is my, my main problem with these classes is I start drawing and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is fun. And then <laughs> I have to remember, like, I don't know why anyone's still paying attention after a certain period of time. Um, okay, I'm just going to, like, I, uh, yeah, I, I want to continue working on here. But I, I think you kind of get the idea. Like, the, the purpose of today's, oh, class is not to um, to be able to, to do a really great finished drawing. It's to learn the basic principles of the line of action. So I'm just going to leave this here for a second. I'm going to put a new battery in that camera. 
and let's see if anyone has sent any pictures for feedback. The other thing that's nice about having this uh, wireless um, microphone is that I can kind of wander around the room a little bit. And I still am, my voice is still about as loud as it was before. Okay. So you, you can see the drawing there if you want to continue working on it, you can do that. Uh, well, you know, maybe while that's happening, I'll just leave this up here on the screen for a minute. Um, where's this? So I'll just put that back. Let's see if there's any comments or anything here that need to be addressed. Um, okay, so Ramon says, I would like to make a contribution, but I do not use PayPal. Can I send you a check addressed to the Emily Carr University? Oh, well, that's very, very sweet of you, Ramon. Um, well, Emily Carr um, is closed right now, um, so, uh, yeah, um, I do have a mailbox there, but I don't know when the next time I'll be allowed in the building is. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember, I, with the PayPal, I don't even know if you had to, I guess you do have to create an account. Um, uh, I mean, I, gen I, I have to figure out a different way to um, accept donations for sure. Uh, so let me think on that. I do. I mean, I really appreciate the, that that offer. Um, uh, so let me let me think on. I, I have a Patreon, but I think the and I haven't, which I haven't fully set up yet. And I think that's also PayPal. So um, I sent. Oh, uh, Peter says he sent something over Twitter. So I'll take a look here in a second. Uh, and I was talking about the answers. Oh, all my movement is hard on my microphone. Oh, and Doris says, is this really quiet or is it my iPad? So it could be my volume levels. I mean, there's, oh, I can bring it up a little bit and tell me if uh, that helps. So, let me see. It could be, it's probably um, a combination of the volumes being a little bit lower and also, since there's no uh, background noise, it probably uh, at times may not sound like there's no volume at all when, if I'm not talking. Um, oh, Heidi says uh, e-transfer. Yeah, you could do an e-transfer. I'll just uh, my email. this in E transfer um, thank you Heidi for that comment and Peter says my thinker looks like the mourner <laughs> that is I like that um, okay so let's go to where's my Twitter let's find your drawing Peter Hmm. So for some reason, I have a hard time finding my own mentions. I don't know. Hmm. What is your? I don't. What is your? I can't see it here popping up immediately. So. Hmm. Um. Come on. Hmm. OK. 
Okay, I can't seem to find... Uh, your... Your post here, uh, Peter. Was it a, a message? No? Um... Oh, here, uh, there we are. Here's your drawing. Ah, okay, cool. So, sorry, it took me a little bit of a second to find it. Um, but, uh, okay. So I think we're, I'm going to kind of move on from the, uh, the thinker here, which uh, I'd be really interested to see what your drawings are. So if you want to upload them and send them to me and we can, I can also give you feedback on them and, and help you sort out maybe any kind of problems you found in your own artwork. Um, and, and just going along with uh, the comment there that Ramon about um, any kind of, if you want to support the channel, then there's links below to the PayPal so if you want to send a small donation. Or I put up there my email if you want to send a uh, donation through e-transfer. So thank you, Heidi, for suggesting that. So this here is Peter's drawing that he sent in of Garfield. I, I was a Heathcliff fan, personally. I don't know if anybody rem remembers Heathcliff. <laughs> um, I, I also read, I think probably I bought at one point every Garfield book there was. Um, but anyway, um, Garfield. Hello, my name is Garfield, and I will assist you with your lasagna infestation problem. <laughs> yes, which can, can be terrible, terrible. I love lasagna, too. Um, so, I, I mean, this is great. I, this, you know, using... I, I'm not sure how you went about making the strong pier, but it's it works, right? Like, do I see? I don't know if I if you built this up using shapes, or you just started with a contour line around here. I'd be interested to know how you approach the drawing, but it works. I find like if you're using basic shapes to make your drawing, um, everything just. It's, it's weird. It seems to have just more volume to it, right? And I think it's because everything kind of connects. Like, the, like often, if, if people are not following, like, uh, drawing shapes, then what happens is you might have, let's say, this back side comes in, and then this line doesn't connect all the way through. It kind of goes into a different place, right? And so um, just using shapes is just super helpful. And this is, it's super easy to draw any cartoon character using these basic shapes. So, um, and then you did a pretty good job of coloring it too. Um, you really did a great job of coloring in the lines, better, better than I am. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, impatient, so I tend to kind of go over top of lines whenever I'm coloring, and there'll be little bits of stuff all over the place. Um... Which goes to show you don't have to color in the lines to be an artist, right? You can feel free to, to blow out all the lines if you like. Um, yeah, I don't really have any any things I can say about it because I think you did a good job, Peter. Um, uh, what I would suggest, the only thing I, I would suggest maybe here is, is with the, the word balloon. So what I would say is, let me see if. Uh, we could do just a quick little demo on, like, let's say, word ballooning. Um, so, and I'll just use a, a color again. So, if I wanted to, there's two ways that I could do a word balloon. One of which is to start out with, like, a shape, right? And then, let's say, this guy's saying something here, All right? We could have this crazy line, and then... What I would do is, you know, as if there's like lines in here on a ruled piece of paper. Right, so that would, and then I can also just kind of write it in quickly, like, let's say, hello, 
my name is and I, uh, this is why I would be doing this in can you see that? Dang. Um My name is Garfield, and I, I try not to strand a letter like that. I will assist you with your, <laughs> and, and so on and so on, right? And then if if I need to move anything around, like let's say, okay, so I, if I want to now, I, I would go over top of this. So let's say, hello, my name is, you see how I'm not lining up perfectly with the, the red lines I did originally um, because there were, I wasn't happy with where I originally put them. So you see, I, instead of that I being stranded there, I've now taken it off, and then I'm going to move it down here. I will assist you with your, see, I should have shifted that over. Lasagna. Um, I'll do this with the red. In the station. All right, so I'm going to move this over here. Um, right, so then I, I go, okay, well, now I went outside of my, my balloon, so I'm going to do a, a bigger balloon to make it all fit, all right, and then I'm going to come back around, And then I would could be able to erase all of the if this was done with just regular pencil I could just erase all those um, original lines just to kind of clean it up a little bit so that um, the the word balloon and the letters are all just kind of more refined um, so that's that's just kind of you know aligning everything so that everything's centered and it just looks a little bit cleaner that would be my suggestion. If, because I think the drawing itself that you did worked out really well. It would just be the word balloon, I think, at this point, that uh, could be improved upon. So does that uh, does that help? I don't know if anybody else uh, sent anything else in. Um, oh, there's all these new comments. The volume's better now. <laughs> uh, my Sandy says, my thinker looks like a Neanderthal. <laughs> um, and oh, Ka uh, Heidi says likes the shirt with the planes. Wonder if you mic'd your white shirt. Yeah. Oh, so was there a lot of movement noise? I, I apologize for that. Um, so there's a lot of static on my shirt. Okay. Well, you know, you you, you learn, live and learn, right? So this is an experiment. Whew. Okay. So I think um, I'm going to call it a session today. Again, in an hour and 40 minutes, people have been sticking around, so I really appreciate that. I'm going to show, I just have a little graphic of things to think about for next class. So on Tuesday of next week, we are going to draw the female figure. So put that up. Um, 
So what I would suggest over the course of the weekend is practicing what we've been doing, is taking, just looking in the newspaper, online, with your sketchbook, you know, pause the YouTube video that you've been watching, and just see if you can draw the very basic action line, or line of action, kind of used interchangeably, um, that you see in that figure. Then try to build the rhythm lines over top of it, and... So you can you could fill up like five pages of a sketchbook with 20 or 30 really quick drawings. Like we're talking, trying to spend five minutes or less on each drawing. Like, uh, you know, the last drawing we did here, you know, we spent 20 minutes on it. That was for a, a much more finished drawing. I would, I would say you'd want to try to ideally get down to where you can knock these these quick gesture drawings out in a minute or less, 30 seconds would be ideal. Like if you can do any of these drawings we did much faster, that would be amazing. That would be a huge achievement. So so um, look for images of people, I, mostly from the front. So it's a, it's much harder to draw things where, where we, we're missing one arm or people are kind of covered. So looking for, for pictures, even people just standing with their hands on their hips you know, reaching out or somebody diving into the water, all that kind of stuff. See if you could find images like that. You could use that uh, website. What was that one called? I forgot what it was even called now. Um, whatever, what is this? Uh, Unsplash.com um, for your images to find something or you can Google it, right? Um, and... The other thing, just think about dynamic poses, too. When you're looking in, uh, like, comic books or artworks, the people are generally in the kind of the beginning or the end of an action, where it's the most dynamic. So see if you can find those movements to draw. I think those would be the most satisfying. And even if you don't find those movements, see if you can find it in your drawing by exaggerating things just a little bit, right? And I think you will you can actually improve on the original kind of pose by making an action line that is just a little bit more exaggerated. Okay, everybody, please like this video if you liked the video. Um, yeah, it would be great if you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. If you want to give a donation, the link's below. And also, you know, I really appreciate um, anybody sharing these videos with friends. I saw Peter over the course of the weeks, um, uploaded this video, shared it with a community of fellow drawers. You know, if there's people that you know out there who could benefit from learning a little bit about drawing, which I think everybody could, everybody should, um, that would be much appreciated. So just a quick share on Facebook is just as meaningful to me as a $10, $20 donation. So... The more people that are drawing, the better world we're going to live in. So, considering all the problems out there in the world, my goodness, we need art more than ever, right? Okay, my friends, we'll see you on Tuesday. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. And, um, yeah, I think I, I, I don't have much more to say. <laughs> okay, take care, everybody.